Hey, this is Bradley from pedalpowergenerator.com. Today I'll be talking to you about the PPG-PM300-R. You may be watching this video because you're concerned about things today and you want to have some backup power, some emergency power for lighting, lighting in your home, lighting outside, or you want to be able to charge your cell phone, you want to be able to charge your laptop, or you want to power devices in your home, different devices. So for whatever the reason, this is a great backup power solution. You also might just be someone who wants to get off the grid just to be independent. Or you might be an educator who's teaching STEM to, in the classroom. This is a great educational tool. Also, if you want to save the energy that you create from the generator, you'll want to know how to use a 12 volt battery to hook up to the generator through a blocking diode and a fuse. I'll be showing you some of that too. So stay tuned, let's have some fun. Just to get started here, we want to be able to make sure you understand how to find more information about this generator. Just type in up in your uh, your bar up here, pedalpowergenerator.com, and scroll down to the generator part here where it says uh, permanent magnet DC generator. And you can scroll down here, and you can see this is the pulley style. Here's the roller style, and here's a data sheet right here you can look at if you want to take a look at the information, the details. If you're a geek, you're an engineer, this is the kind of stuff that you love. So this is how you get to the actual generator page. Here's a generator that's mounted on a piece of wood. It's pretty easy to use. And here's the wires. So basically we just go ahead and get the wires from the Wattsview mon power monitor here. And I'm going to hook up the, uh, the red wire, which is the positive, and the black, which is the negative. And you don't want these to touch at all when they're, you're running the generator because it'll just short it out and make it real hard to turn. So the uh, direction to turn is clockwise to make the red positive and the black negative. So clockwise is this direction. And uh, right now we'll just take off the roller. I have this one loose already. Take it off and just hook it up to a drill. At, uh, 2 volts, 2.1, and at 305 RPM. Now we're at 5 volts, 6 volts, so that's 800 RPM. And we have 1,750 RPM, that's at 13 volts. There's uh, 3,612, that's 28 volts right there. Okay, I apologize that this is making things too simple for some of you more advanced electrical people, but just wanted to make a voltage curve for this generator so we can see what its output looks like. Uh, re revolutions per minute is what we have in this column. That's RPM, revolutions per minute. That's how many times this rubber roller turns in one minute. And we measured that with the tachometer. So 305 yielded 2.1 volts, 800 RPM yielded 6 volts. 1750 yielded 13 volts and 3612 yielded 28 volts. These are really rough approximations, but it'll give us an idea of what the voltage curve looks like. So if we go here, we can see each of our data points that we collected, the four of them right here. So for instance, if you wanted to run in the 12 volt range, you would find this graph very useful because you could go right here to where 12 volts is, about right here where my mouse is, and find where it hits on this graph. So that's about 1600 RPM. And that's with no load. If you have a load, then this will sag. Okay, here's the hardware needed to mount the generator against the exercise bike flywheel. I have a seven inch by seven inch plate right here. Six millimeter bolts, four of them. Five inch quarter 20s, some flat washers, some wing nuts. And here's some brackets that are just cut out of some half inch by half inch square tubing. These are six millimeter bolts, so you'll need a size 10 socket or wrench to tighten those down. And we'll just Turn the plate over here. 
All right, this will only work with the style of exercise bike that has a. mounted on there. The face of the generator is flush with the face of the plate. That's what you need. Okay, so now it's time to preload the mounting bolts. So we'll take the long one, put it in here. All right, so we're gonna use the socket wrench here and tighten this up. Okay, you can see right now there's a gap right here between the rubber roller and the flywheel. So we gotta tighten that up. You can use a lever. I have a chisel right here to go underneath the bar, underneath the plate down here, and just gently lift up. Just twist the chisel and get it lined up so it's flush. Reach back behind here, tighten up the wing nuts. So right now, if I Twist the rubber wheel like this. I can do a slip check right now. I can feel it slipping on the flywheel. It's still not quite tight. I don't have these wing nuts tightened all the way yet. So take my lever, reach underneath, gently pry up again, just a little bit right there. A little click. Now this wheel has to be flush with this wheel. It should not be slanted at all. It should be perfectly square. Now I'll do the check again. This time it's not slipping. So I can take my socket. Tighten up a little bit. Not a whole lot here, this is just wood, so it will break. You don't need a lot of pressure to get this to stick, so. You can see the roller right now is flat along here. That's really tight, and that's only for the most extreme riders who think they can get 300 watts out. This will damage your roller if you do it much tighter than this. Your roller will start to, to shred and you'll wear it out if you're running at high power. If you're a very, very strong rider, you just have to keep be careful and make sure you don't over tighten this too much. Looks like we're done now. So this is how you mount the generator up to the exercise bike. So now it's time to go ahead and test it out. We just have to connect the wires up to a voltmeter or a power monitor. Uh, right here is the Watts View power monitor. And we're just going to, you know, wire it up to see what kind of voltage output we get and uh, see what it looks like. Two, putting the red on red and the black on black. Okay, and then we have the Wattsview software right here. This is customizable for your application. It's available. So... We're going to look at volts. We'll ignore the amps and the watts because there's no load on the generator, which means it can't produce any power without any kind of load. It'll just be easy to pedal. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here it goes. We're going to get on here and just do a quick voltage check. See what we get. Right now I'm about 30% speed, 40%, about 18 volts. Now I'm going about 75% uh, speed, 22 volts. Now I'm at 95, 90, hitting around 32 volts. All right, so that's working great. We have the polarity correct, so the voltage is in the right direction.